That is kind of the theme of Gideon, is that it's not, it, it's, it's about calling the, the unprepared and the weak and, uh, and the frightened. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why we're here. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Welcome to the Three Abbasidarians. My name is Matt, this is Brian, and that's Jordan. Uh, today we are going to talk about Gideon. The story's extremely long, so we had to cut back quite a bit because yeah, we already talked too much. We even we even pre-recorded a, a recap, and uh, and we are cutting into that, so let's let's roll that. Did we really record a recap? The Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord, which is mostly how they spent their time when they weren't wandering around the wilderness complaining. God was so irritated with their behavior that he allowed the Midianites to harass the crap out of them for seven years. The Midianites made a hobby of destroying the Israelites' crops, and they pursued this hobby with such passion that it drove the Israelites to the point of starvation. One of the Israelites suffering under the bullying of the Midianites was Gideon. When we first encounter Gideon, he's threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press. The angel of the Lord appears disguised as a traveler and addresses Gideon. Mighty hero, he says, the Lord is with you. Gideon responds in a way some might describe as overly emotional, saying, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are the miracles our ancestors told us about? What the farts, Broseph? The angel replied by giving Gideon a mission. Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Gideon points out that his clan is the weakest in the entire tribe of Manasseh and that he is the least of all the members of his family. But the angel doesn't let up. He tells Gideon, I will be with you and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Gideon then demands a sign from the angel to prove that he is who he says he is. He tells the angel to wait there while he, Gideon, goes to prepare an offering. When he returns with the offering, the angel tells Gideon to place the offering on a rock. Then the angel touches the offering with the end of his staff, and the offering is consumed by fire, and the angel of the Lord disappears. And then a whole bunch of really cool stuff happens, and Gideon trusts God through all of it, even though most of what God asks him to do is totally and completely bonkers crazy. But God's faithful, and he uses Gideon to free the Israelites from the Midianites. It's a super cool story, and you should totally read the whole thing in Judges chapters 6, 7, and 8. All right, so what are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts, uh, I don't know. What I thought was interesting was when the angel first came to Gideon and said, you're already a warrior. Like, he greets him as if he's a warrior. And mm -hmm. then Gideon is kind of like, but I'm the weakest one ever. I don't yeah. have any power. And then the angel's like, go in the strength that you have. It, it's almost like the angel was saying, this isn't about you. Right. And that is a theme. If you read the entire story of Gideon, that is a theme. Mm -hmm. God is saying, hey, look, this is not about what you can do. Yeah. What you can do is irrelevant. We're here to show what I can do. And I can do an awful lot with an awful little. Gideon replies to the angel of the Lord by saying, Where have you been? Where are all yeah. of those miracles yeah, yeah, yeah. that we saw you do for our ancestors? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the angel of the Lord responds by saying, Aren't I not here now sending you? It's a very prevalent in the whole Bible that God uses his own people mm -hmm. to be the rescuers for mm -hmm. his oppression. In modern context, this is a kid whose chores just got way harder because there's some rough family in the neighborhood who if they see you out mowing the lawn, they're gonna come beat you up, steal your mower, and sell it on Craigslist. This kid, he's just really frustrated that they're in this situation where his life is so much harder because of these people and there's a, a perfectly capable police officer down the street who needs to come and deal with these bullies but he's not doing it. Why won't he come down and why won't he settle the score and make things right? And he's very frustrated. In fact, a lot of folks are frustrated. They're so frustrated that they've actually turned to this other thug and they're paying him to maybe deal with these other guys who are bullying, but they're not, they're not dealing with it. So instead of trusting in the righteous law, they are trusting in this false law. And that's where we find Gideon. His father has, uh, has a, an altar to Baal and an Asherah pole. And the angel tells him, go and get rid of these things. So it'd be like uh, somebody coming along and saying, yeah, that police officer, he, he, he's going to help you. 
He's going to bring in lights and sirens. Everybody's going to come in. They're going to run this awful family right out of the neighborhood, and you're going to be fine. But first, you got to go deal with the other guys that everyone has been, you know, turning to for help, who they're no help at all. And that's the kind of the first task that Gideon has set. Go down the street and deal with... The, and, the gang lords and burn, who, their, burn their house down. Who are well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of <laughs> arson is not a joke, kids. My and, and, I mean, unless it's funny. You know what is funny? What is funny? That the altar of Baal that Gideon is called to go destroy was his father's altar of Baal. Another thing that I love is that when Gideon goes and he destroys the altar and he cuts down the Asherah pole, and everyone wants to know who did this. Who made these guys mad and who ran them out of the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Now there's nobody to deal now, with, with the Midianites. Have. Right. Well, let's bring them out and kill them. And Gideon's father knows it was his son. And instead of being mad that his son called him out for his sins, he, 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 like, Penny, stop it! She uh, is yeah, an she angry she blinked, cat. She blinked, she blinked very, uh... What's the word? Aggressively? Yes, or like... she's very judgmental. Yeah. When they thing? want to kill Gideon, his father says, no, you know what? We're wrong. And and if Baal is upset about this, let Baal come and deal with him. Yeah. Yeah. Let Baal stick up for himself. I I'm not doing this anymore. He did what was right. You guys aren't touching him. Let Baal do something about this if he's so big and powerful. As for me, I'm going to do what's right from now on. Yeah, then the Israelites start calling... Gideon, Jerubabel, yeah, like, which means like contender of Baal or yeah, something. Or, uh, Baal. Yeah, or yeah, there's some to contend with Baal. Yeah. There, there's some yeah. some different different translations, but translations. he ends up leading God's army, and he, he he is very instrumental in freeing the Israelites from their oppressors. Yeah. And I mean, he goes from this one tiny thing that happened in his neighborhood to saving his entire nation. Absolutely, all because he was faithful and he did. All these tasks that God set for him that if you look at on, like on paper, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. It is nuts. And we know that Gideon, I'm sorry, I'm talking over a lot. You have, you, uh, do you have something to say? No, no, you're not talking over me. I haven't said anything. I know that. I'm just, I'm just dominating the conversation. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're, you're good I do that. that. When God asks him to do things like, you know, no, don't take the entire Israelite army to battle. Leave them all behind. Take what three hundred? You started with twenty-two thousand. Yeah, you started with right. a lot. And then God said, "That's too many." And then He keeps whittling it right. down yeah. to basically like a field trip. You know, yeah. like, like all right, who wants to go see four, the Midianites? Four busloads of kids going to the Indianapolis Children's Museum. They're gonna fight the Midianites. <laughs> what about Gideon? Is so willing to see the impossible happen. I mean, it's it's that's not part of his nature. You know, he doesn't he doesn't believe in the impossible. He's very skeptical. And we see that when he first meets the angel of the Lord. He has faith. And that faith makes him do some crazy, stupid things. And he, Except he wants to believe. Because I think that goes back to that whole thing of when he said, you know, my ancestors told me all these stories mm -hmm. about all the great things you did. Like, where are you now? Great stories come from bad times, I think. So mm -hmm. it's, it, in a sense, it's like if Gideon, if, if that hadn't happened, there would be no Gideon. If the Midianites hadn't mm -hmm. oppressed them, there would be no story of Gideon. And all of those stories that the ancestors told him about happened in bad times. So That's they were... Point. Bad things happening, and in the midst of those bad things, God did amazing things. And I think even where it talked about God saying there's too many people, and he, then he, so he says, there's, you have too many people, I can't deliver the, Midian, the Midianites into their hands, or Israel will boast against me saying my own strength has saved me. And so yeah. he's basically wanting to make sure exactly. there is no way that you're going to be able to say, yeah, we're really good, right. we did this. Right, yeah. right. There's, there's no um, military genius right. capable of winning that battle. Right. I mean, it's just not, it's just not possible. Yeah. But right. God is like, I'll make it happen. Should we go to the sorting mat? Let's go to the sorting mat. All right, where do you like, place Gideon? Um, Gideon's a Ravenclaw. I mean, he is, he is a total Ravenclaw. You're not going to talk about no, it No, I'll get to it. All right. I, I just don't want Jordan to get angry. <laughs> I'm already. <laughs> He's in a good place. Let's keep him there. <laughs> I'm feeling good right now. <laughs> so maybe, maybe we should have an envelope with it written on there that you can give to Jordan. Oh, like he already knows. Like, <laughs> and so then you... <laughs> Like the Oscars. Right. Yeah, okay. Right. Well, so he's a Ravenclaw. We see him solving this problem of how do we keep the Midianites from destroying our crops? Well, if they don't know we have them, okay, how do we hide them from them? Okay, we're going to thresh it in this wine press so the breeze doesn't come and blow the chaff away. We'll figure out the chaff issue later. We'll get it done. We'll take care of it. He does some very Gryffindor things, but totally a Ravenclaw. Yeah, buddy, we finally get a good one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We've had a lot of good ones. You say this every you time. Said the every Fat King. The Fat King was he's a, the only he Ravenclaw. Was. Oh, please. He was. The only one so far that's been a Ravenclaw. You know, I'm kidding. 
feel like there was another one. Well, well we filmed Gideon twice, so. <laughs> <laughs> was he a Ravenclaw the first time, too? 